Hello, good evening. What a beautiful Thursday night again for us to meet in this webinar room. Hello, brand partners over there. If Valin is loud and clear, can everyone please type in one? Hello? Right, can everyone hear me loud and clear? Yes, thank you, Teddy. What about others? Right, thank you very much. Fantastic. Hey, we meet again in this web business room and tonight we're proud to have Dr. Abraham, our product consultant, here with us to help us how to manage on hypertension. Well, many times we don't know that actually our lifestyle may affect our life in getting or so-called diagnosed with hypertension. Well, tonight, uh, Dr. Ibrahim is going to share with us lots of lots of tips and a lot of ways to prevent or even to take care. And later, of course, he will share with us how Vima can help in preventing this disease. Right? So everyone, if you would like to take some notes down, or you have some question that later you would like to consult with doctor, please do not hesitate to tap it on. I will uh, be here with you all and I will take down all the uh, questions, all right? So again, this is Valine from Vema Malaysia. Good evening and I shall pass the room to Dr. Ibrahim. Welcome doctor. The room is yours. Thank you, Valin. Uh, good evening to everyone who is present. Can you hear me loud and clear? Could you type one if it's okay? Thanks, Teddy. Uh, thank you for your response. I think that all of you are hearing it as well as Teddy. Okay, this evening we are going to talk a little bit about hypertension. Let me start off with a slide which shows a single cell. Most of us who have gone through some basic biology teaching would have seen this cell in the first chapter of the biology. Uh, this may look a little complex to some people. To tell you the truth, this is actually a very simplified version of a cell. When any animal is only one cell, like a meba, which is the traditional cell everybody quotes, it lives in a liquid environment. The liquid from outside can get into the cell easily. All the activity goes on in the cell. Any waste matter quickly gets diffused outside. Because the only thing that separates from the liquid outside and the semi-liquid inside is the cell membrane that you see here. So for a single cell animal, Taking in nutrition, throwing out waste matter is no problem at all. This is one cell. Let's have a look at the human body. We have 10 trillion cells. 10 T, not B, a billion, trillion. And this is a conservative estimate. Some people estimate it at 100 trillion cells. Can you imagine the number? 10 trillion multiplied by this, that is a very complex setup. Now, with so many cells, when you need to supply nutrition and remove waste matter, we have to think of some kind of a system to do this. This can be done only by a system which brings about a liquid to touch all the different parts of the bodies that you see here to supply what it needs and to remove the waste matter. Now this is easily accomplished by a fluid that circulates around and so we can call it the circulatory system and that is what we see in the next slide. Now a circulatory system involves blood vessels. You will see two uh, types of vessels there. The one in the red are arteries, the one in the vein uh, blue are veins. Now the diagram you see here is a very very simplified version. The total amount of blood vessels that are available in an adult human being, if theoretically removed from the body, 
and made to uh, touch end to end, it will go up to about 60,000 miles, not kilometers, huh? that, that makes it almost 100,000 kilometers. It is very extensive, you have to supply blood to the top of the head, right down to the bottom of the toe, and millimeter. The supply is very, very intensive. If you want to know how intensive, you take a small needle. The tip of the needle is less than even one square millimeter. Prick your body with that and you get blood flowing out. That shows how intensely the body is supplied with the blood vessels. So we have a circulatory system in place to supply nutrition, remove waste matter. Now the fluid here is not going to flow because any fluid to flow, one side must have a higher pressure than the other side. Only then it begins to flow. Now the human body, this is easily achieved because there is a pump sitting in the chest cavity which creates the pressure. Now this pump is the heart, it pumps the blood right down to the legs all over. In fact, the heart pumps hard enough so that the blood goes down and get pushed up back again through the veins to the lungs. Okay, so this is the circulatory system. Now, this circulatory system serves a number of things. One is to supply nutrition, the other is to remove waste matter and the system operates within a certain pressure. Now, this is to just summarize and we'll talk more about this. What it does is supplies, when I say nutrition, it is not just nutritional ingredients. Hormones produced by certain organs which have to reach different parts of the body. Oxygen which is taken up in the lungs has to be distributed to all the cells and then it has to collect the excess carbon dioxide from the cells, take it back to the lungs. The waste, metabolic enzyme waste of the cells have to be taken to the kidney to be eliminated. So there's a lot of work to be done and the circulatory system does that very well. Now this system must have a certain amount of pressure to do the work. Any system has got a range beyond which it will not work or it will just break down. For example, if you have a pipe, you need certain amount of pressure for your water to go to the tank and then come down to your tap. But if the pressure gets too high, this is what happens. The tap, uh, sorry, the pipe breaks and the water starts leaking. Now, this is in a setup which is not living. But the human body is a living organism and therefore it reacts a little differently. How, how it does that is, let me get back to that slide where there is a leak. Now the blood vessels in the body are living and therefore they repair themselves. Of course the blood vessels just don't rupture like this immediately the first thing that happens is a crack on the inside of the blood vessel and the body heals it by scarring and therefore the blood vessel gets a little tight. Now this happens when the blood pressure is high. Now that is where we will get the word hypertension. It's actually one word. I've split it here so that you understand the meaning. Now tension or the pressure more than normal and therefore it causes this problem. Let me get the slides. Uh, okay. Now, in human beings, the scarring that happens makes the blood vessel hard or tight. Our blood vessels are actually very pliable, unlike a uh, lead pipe or a plastic tube which doesn't increase in size very much. <clears throat> Our blood vessels can, can increase in size and contract back to normal size. 
the ability of the blood vessel to be comprised like that is reduced if we get scarring. Now, the scar doesn't not only makes it tighter or harder, that area where the damage was done starts accumulating many substances. The major part is cholesterol and this finally leads to building of plaques or blocks in the blood vessel which can cause problems. Okay, so now we know about the circulatory system, the pressure, why there has to be a range. The, the next thing to understand is what is the normal pressure? When you go and see a doctor, what happens is you use a instrument, they measure the blood pressure by putting a cuff around your upper arm and uh, this will show some figures. Now, <clears throat> now what is told to you is your, your blood pressure is normal, it's 120 by 80. What is the meaning of these figures? To put it very simply, the upper figure, so when you remember your blood pressure, remember this. The higher value is always on top, the smaller value is at the bottom. Now, the higher value shows the maximum pressure in the system when the heart contracts. The lower value shows the maximum pressure, I'm sorry, the, the lowest pressure when the heart relaxes. So, the top one, maximum pressure when the heart contracts. The bottom one, the lowest pressure, it's not always that people have 120 by 80. There is a range within which we consider it normal. For example, some people in the absence of any medical problem may have a pressure of 90 by 60. Usually you find this in ladies who are uh, small built, very light, they have this pressure. So you can take a normal this pressure to be normal on such a person. On the other end, before we decide to put somebody on medication, the, the barrier that you have to cross is 140-90. Now, 140-90, we already get very worried. Anyone who's got slightly underneath this is already pre-hypertensive. Okay? Let's say someone has 130, 90. That's not good. Someone has 140 by 80. Not good either. What do you know from this? The top and the bottom finger, both are important for your health. So make sure that it is far away from this maximum down to here. Statistics from uh, insurance companies show that you enjoy better health when your blood pressure is slightly below 120-80. Surprising, isn't it? Uh, 110-70 seems to be an ideal figure from insurance companies. Those guys live long enough to collect a lot of insurance. Now, <clears throat> when we look at blood pressure, it is not something that stays stationary. It varies a little bit up and down during different times of the day. Early morning, it may be a little higher, surprisingly, because you are lying down, you are not moving, the heart is doing all the work, and the heart pushes quite hard to circulate the blood. So when you measure in the morning, it may be a little high. When you get up and walk around, and after a while, it settles down. Then when you go to work, due to pressure, jam, work in the office, it tends to go up again. Okay? So there is a variation. The variation should be within normal limits. Of course, when you have very hard exercise, it goes all the way higher than the higher limit. But that's normal during the effort. As soon as you stop, within two to three minutes, it should settle down. Okay? This is the, these are the various ranges of the blood pressure. Now, we know that the system repairs by scarring. What we don't realize is 
it happens all over the place, not just at one area. Blood vessels to the brain, the heart, the kidney, the eyes, all organs. Many organs have a lot of reserve and therefore only certain organs will manifest this uh, in the early stages. Okay. Uh, next thing we need to know is complications of hypertension. I mentioned this organs just recently. Why this organs and this organs in particular? They consume a lot of nutrition for their function, which includes oxygen. Therefore, the blood vessels that go to these organs are larger, I mean more in number. And in the eyes, for example, the, eye, uh, the blood vessels are quite thin inside the eye. So if the pressure is high, the vessels in the eyes can burst, which happens to people. When the pressure is high, now the heart has to pump harder than usual and therefore there is more wear and tear of the heart. When there is high blood pressure, the blood that reaches the kidney can damage the kidney. Now the kidney is very important right at the top here. Kidney has a very big say in the blood pressure of the body. The kidney needs a certain amount of pressure to filter your blood. If it doesn't have that pressure or enough of that pressure, the kidney itself will produce a hormone to increase the blood pressure in the body. So we are in a very dangerous situation. High blood pressure due to other reasons can damage the kidney. Kidney after getting damaged will push the blood pressure up even further. Now if you look at people with heart, uh, sorry, uh, kidney disease in the sense that kidney failure, all of them have that high blood pressure. High blood pressure reinforced by kidney damage is very, very difficult to treat. Then this becomes a, a cycle where high pressure destroys the kidney, kidney pushes the pressure further and finally you can have total shutdown of the kidney. What is the treatment once somebody has blood pressure? I have simplified the approach here. Now, someone who's on a high blood uh, pressure situation needs to do a couple of things. First thing to tackle is the diet. Now, someone who's thin also can get blood pressure. So why the diet? It is not the calories or the weight, but rather the uh, type of food that you take. If you consume a very high salty diet, then you are reinforcing the pressure in the body, raising it up. So cut down on your salt. Cut down on artificial food. Any food that is in a packet has got chemicals, preservatives, coloring matter, taste enhancers, and so on. All these chemicals are in the sodium form. And therefore, that sodium which is actually is the main cause. Not so much the salt that you take in your food. In your food, the biggest source of salt is sambal. So make sure that your sambal is minimized. Not that you can't take it. Do not be too generous with that. Okay. Now the next thing is lifestyle. People in... Uh, Living in towns, live under stress all the time. So what happens is, it affects the blood pressure. You cannot get rid of stress. You must be able to manage the stress that you have. If you have excess stress and you can't manage, you must have the list of the things that you um, have to manage and try and eliminate the ones that causes stress. It is not the toughest uh, work that causes stress. Sometimes very simple things can cause stress and uh, therefore uh, they are much easier to get rid of. Okay, now we'll go to the next slide. With all this we want to know how is the blood pressure for you? Now this uh, blood pressure is controlled in the body by nerves. Blood pressures are 
blood, uh, sorry, blood vessels are living tissue and they have nerve supply. So when we are under stress, the nerve is stimulated, your blood vessels contract and what happens is pressure goes up. When you are relaxed, certain other nerves relaxes the blood vessel and the pressure comes down. That is one influence. Another influence is the hormone. In times of emergency, an example is adrenal hormone uh, <clears throat> that raises your blood pressure because you need that kind of pressure to deal with the emergency. But if that hormone is supplied continuously, your blood pressure will be sustained at a higher level for longer periods and there will come a time where the system will adapt to it and even when that hormone has come down, you will still have high blood pressure. Okay. Now, area covered, what do I mean by this? Some of us are very overweight. So the heart has to now pump blood to a very large area. Remember the heart needs to cover the muscles, the bones, the organs. Now the muscles when they contract push some blood back to the heart. So it helps the heart. But if you are overweight and you have a lot of fat, fat doesn't contract and does not help with the circulation. The heart has to pump harder so that the blood not only supplies the fat but the blood comes back to it. That puts a lot of stress can contribute towards hypertension. Remember this, if you have muscle, muscle will carry you. If you have fat, you have to carry the fat. The last one is stress. Actually, this influences the top two things. Now, like I said earlier, stress is a very big topic. There is no way you can get rid of stress. Stress is desirable because we perform better under stress. Try to keep within the stress that you can manage. If the stress overwhelms you, you have to get rid of whatever brings you to that stage. Okay, now the treatment again goes back to the main causes, diet, lifestyle. Now, I didn't cover the last part, the drugs. Let's look at the drugs. You have tried life's diet, you have tried lifestyle, the blood pressure is still high. You will need to take medication. Many people try to postpone the medication as much as possible. As long as the blood pressure is high, you are damaging your system. Please take medication. The moment you start medication, many people give up on diet and lifestyle. I take drugs now so I can do what I want. No, it doesn't work like that. If you are careful with your diet, careful with your lifestyle, you take minimum drugs. If you let yourself loose in the first two areas, you will have to take more drugs, stronger drugs or a higher dose of a drug. Remember, the more drugs you take, the more side effects that you have. So this is the order of importance and you must follow this whether even if you are on treatment. Okay, what are the supplements that one can re recommend for a, a hypertensive? You must be very careful with your diet. What you may not get from the diet that can affect your blood pressure is minerals. A lack of calcium can contribute, not cause, contribute towards high blood pressure. A lack of magnesium can keep your blood vessels tight. There must be enough magnesium for the blood vessels to relax. Potassium, another mineral, it helps the heart to relax. In fact, an overdose of that can cause it to relax so much that a patient can die of having excess potassium. This is something that no one has to be worried about if you are abnormal kidneys because the kidney keeps a watch on the minerals that you have 
any excess is secreted out. That is why in a patient with kidney failure, where he cannot throw out not only waste matter but even excess mineral like potassium, they are very careful that they should not be given fruits which are high in potassium. So minerals are very, very important in the maintenance of the suppleness of blood vessels which contribute towards managing high blood, normal blood pressure, high blood pressure. The second thing is we talked about stress in modern lifestyles. Stress produces a lot of free radicals which can affect your blood vessels directly. For example, the inner lining of the blood vessel. That is the region where free radicals can attack the very thin lining which is supposed to be super smooth and make it a little rough where blocks can start forming. To minimize excess free radicals, you have to take antioxidants. These are two items that can directly support and help your body in maintaining normal blood pressure and if you're under treatment for high blood pressure, to help you to bring it under control. Just want to introduce this product called Vima, which provides both of what we described earlier, that is minerals and antioxidants, but also vitamins. Uh, this product supplies vitamins A, B, C, D, E, in one serving, it applies 100% of your daily requirement. And when it comes to the minerals, it supplies major minerals, minor minerals, and even the micro minerals, totaling 63 to 65 different minerals are found here. There is no product in the market at the moment which combines all these three, not just into a tablet, but anything. But here, we have not only put it together, but have also presented it in a liquid form, which is easy to consume, pleasant to take, and can give you maximum absorption. Because liquid is always much, much easier to handle by the stomach, whether they are even children, elderly people, or a sick person recovering from an illness. Remember, the person has a also a sick digestive system, they can't digest easily. So what we have here is Vima that has got uh, all the requirements to support someone who's got high blood pressure and someone who hasn't to try and make it as much as possible. Now I'm going to stop here for some questions. Some A uh, number of questions have already come up. A final word on the product while you are typing your questions. This is a product that is formulated, clinically tested. Very few food supplements, hardly any are clinically tested nowadays. But Vima is not only formulated by Vima, clinically tested by a third party, produced by facility that is wholly owned by Vima and Vima is entirely responsible for the market of this product. Okay, we already have things coming in. The first one, I always said hypertension is related to heart disease. Is it true? Meaning that if I have hypertension sooner or later, I will have a heart problem too. Now, I do not want to take away too much information from the next session we have another session on uh, 21st of this month, Thursday, same time. So same day, same time next week. Please remember, 21st, Thursday, 8 p.m., we will be talking specifically about heart disease. But to answer this question, when you have high blood pressure, the system has more pressure than it can handle initial cracks appear in the inner lining of the blood vessel for some unknown reason. This happens more in the blood vessels of the heart and the brain. And this is where block starts coming in, blockages. Uh, so if it happens in the brain, you get a stroke. If it is with the heart, you get a heart attack. 
A stroke is really a heart attack in the brain. The, the, proto the, the process is similar, uh, but the location is different. Second question, uh, if I need medication to control my blood pressure and I refuse to take it, how to improve the blood pressure? Now, blood pressure, and this is for people who do not have blood pressure, please take all precaution not to get it. Once you have it, you will need medication. Once the blood pressure is up, it is with every heartbeat, the system is sustaining some damage. You bring it down quickly by medication. Then institute a healthier lifestyle. Over a period of time, when the blood pressure really comes down, let your doctor who's treating you titrate the medication if necessary. Okay? But some people will say, yeah, I've been doing this and you know after one year no change in the medicine, I still need the medicine. You're lucky. Because of your lifestyle, you don't have to increase the dosage of the medicine. Ah, just like aging process, diseases also become more and more severe. So if you don't want your illness such as hypertension to get worse, you have to start a healthier lifestyle with the medication. My cousin is only 16 but is confirmed hypertensive patient. Since he is so young, any chances to be healthy without medication? Now, this is another area of blood pressure. When someone this high, 16 years of age, has got blood pressure, he should go for a complete checkup, including a checkup of his kidney. In younger people, there's a higher chance of them having some kidney problem which has driven the pressure to this high. So make sure she has not only a general checkup, but a complete checkup of his kidney function. Now, even after that, you still have to bring it down. Okay, if there is a problem in the kidney, they will correct it. But even then, he will have to take some medication. Doctor says, I am borderline to hypertension. Uh, what should I do? Stay on the right side of the border by going on a very aggressive lifestyle change. You see, all these changes don't come about from day before yesterday. They must have taken years to develop. And if you think you become very strict with your diet and lifestyle and in three months it's coming down, you are wrong. You have to go on a very aggressive. Now, it is estimated that your body can be renewed in a year. 95% of your body tissues can be renewed. So if you go on a very serious, aggressive diet lifestyle change, you have to, or rather, you, you will see results, major results, after one year. Yeah, during that year, you will see some improvement. But the improvement will continue for about a year. Doctor said, I have secondary hypertension. What's, what's that mean? Now, remember earlier the question, a 16-year-old boy had blood pressure. Let's assume that he had some kidney disturbance. Now, that is called secondary. It, the blood pressure is secondary to a kidney problem. There are other situations where this can be caused. Above the kidney, there's an organ called adrenal gland. If the adrenal gland is malfunctioning, it can drive the pressure up. Now, that is again hypertension secondary to a adrenal problem. And that kind of hypertension is called secondary. But out of 100 people, 95% will have no reason to have high blood pressure. In other words, no single reason. And this is called primary hypertension. Next question. Any sign or symptoms for me to know that I am having high blood pressure? Now, this question comes up very frequently. High blood pressure does not cause any symptom for most people. The few people who have some symptoms make a lot of noise and everybody thinks that if you have high blood pressure, 
you must have giddiness, headache, tightness in the neck and so on. Most people do not have any symptoms. Just a month ago, I saw a young lady with a blood pressure of 220 over 120. Now that lady could throw a stroke any time. And I asked her, how does she feel? She said, she doesn't feel anything. That's the reason hypertension is called the silent killer. Okay? This is not to uh, criticize those who do have symptoms. They are lucky. They, at least it shows it, the, the body warns them something is wrong. Okay? So most people do not have symptoms. Next question. My mother does not have hypertension, but last year she got stroke. Why? Now, stroke is a, has got several causes. Hypertension is only one of the causes. Now, she may have a heart problem, which can form a clot in the blood that is being pumped by the heart, and the clot may have shot into the brain, blood vessels of the brain, causing the stroke. Or she may have had a blood vessel in the brain which is rather thin and that may have ruptured. So stroke, the hypertension or high blood pressure is not the only cause but one of the more often causes. Next one, I exercise and I control my diet very well but I have high blood pressure too. Why? Now, all of us are born with different faces. No face looks like yours. Similarly, our bodies, though the basic structure is the same, we have a lot of metabolic variations. I mentioned earlier, 10 trillion cells, so many things going on. Each body is a little different. And uh, we don't know why some people live a not so healthy lifestyle, but their blood pressure is very good. Some people are very careful, exercise, they are trim, they go to bed early and they may have blood pressure. Now, of course, there are some influences that come with the family, uh, but at this juncture, we, we are not sure exactly why. I would suggest that this person take uh, medication. All my family members have hypertension history and I am very worried how to prevent. Now. If all the members of the family has high blood pressure, there is a good chance that you will have it. Sometimes this happens because the family has the same diet. So if you alter your diet, you have a good chance to avoid it. Sometimes the family is on the heavy obese side. If you try to reduce your excess body fat, you have a better chance of preventing it. Sometimes the family uh, doesn't involve in physical activity. So if you take physical activities regularly, there's another good uh, additional feature that can keep high blood pressure away. How can Vima help on high blood pressure and what is the suggested dosage to take da daily? Now, Vima doesn't help your blood pressure. Remember, this is a food supplement. It's not medication. Now, when you go on to a healthy lifestyle, you are taking better food, uh, better quality food. Now, that nutrition may help the body to bring about changes that can reduce the blood pressure. Now, this is not a 100% thing because different people have different types of bodies and the blood pressure that you have may have already caused some changes. Then no point taking Vima, that means not really. Take a good diet, you may prevent further rise in blood pressure because the body is healthier. Next question. During my pregnancy, I got hypertension, but after my delivery, the hypertension still stays on. Any chances to improve is I have controlled diet and exercise well. This doesn't happen most of the time. But sometimes during pregnancy, there is a situation where some kidney damage occurs. And some people have not only have high blood pressure, they have swelling of legs, they, have, they leak protein in their urine, and when you have all these three together, 
you are usually not allowed to go on to a normal delivery, you need uh, surgery right away. Now, some people, the damage to the kidney is not so much, so after pregnancy they recover. But once you have blood pressure during pregnancy, you have to be super strict because you're quite sure that you're going to be hypertensive later in life. I have high blood pressure but I only take the medicine when I do not feel well. Will that cause problem to my heart? Now, they have studied people with high blood pressure, no treatment. They have studied people with high blood pressure with treatment. And a third group that treats, takes treatment intermittently. They find that those who do take treatment regularly, the complications is only slightly higher than those who do not have high blood pressure. But people who take blood pressure medications intermittently have much higher complications. Why is that? Because you take pressure, it comes down. You stop it, it goes up. Then you take it, it comes down. So the pounding to the system, the blood vessel system is more than the variations experienced under normal conditions or controlled blood pressure. So once you go on medication, make sure you take it on a regular basis. I have newly joined Vima. Can doctor explain in more details about Vima? I just received my product, have not started to consume. Very briefly, our product is a nutritional supplement. There are no herbal extracts, no chemicals. In fact, we go the extra step. Not to add any preservatives, coloring matter, taste enhancers. Okay? This is at our disadvantage because if you don't add preservative, there is a shorter lifespan. But somehow, uh, the company feels that's the principle they want to follow. So this nutritional supplement gives you your daily requirement 100% of your vitamin A, B, C, D, and E. It also provides you a daily requirement of your antioxidants, which are measured uh, by a term called ORAC. Not a good measurement, but that's the only measurement we have. Now, we require about 2,500 or so or rec value and what we have here is close to 2006 to 2007 per serving. I say serving and not dosage because this is not a drug. So this supplement can be given to almost anybody. If there are herbal supplements then there are certain patients or members who can't take but with this product anyone can take it. My pressure is 120.95 and I am, having, am I having high blood pressure? As I mentioned earlier, both values are important. 120 is fine, your top value. 95 is high. You need to see a doctor, find out why you have such a high lower value. I have low blood pressure at 70 by 60. Is that harmful? Can Vima help? Now, sometimes low pressure is due to low blood levels. Many people confuse the two to be one. Pressure is different. Amount of red blood cell or hemoglobin or blood in the system is different. So some people who are anemic can have low pressure. And some people who are not that fit, very unfit, the whole body is a little lax and a small build, you can have low pressure. Please check what is the cost with your doctor. Next one, I have a stroke last year and I am only 35. After my stroke, I have had high blood pressure and diabetes. Why did it happen without any symptom? Now, at 35 to get stroke, probably this member had high blood pressure and diabetes which he did not know after the stroke of course they checked for everything and they discovered you have high blood pressure and diabetes now this simply means you have to treat both diseases aggressively as you are still very young
I would suggest follow your doctor's uh, instructions very closely. Go for frequent follow-up that you're under control. Keep a good diet and lifestyle. Take a good supplement like Vima. I took birth control pills for five years and was confirmed diagnosed with high blood pressure two months ago. Now, we hear this on and off. Uh, it was more often 30 years ago because the family planning pills were made um, but the hormones were made synthetically and uh, at high doses. Now these hormones affect the adrenal gland. If you remember the gland that sits on top of the kidney and I said disorders there can cause high blood pressure. Okay. Now this uh, Family planning pills work in both ways. It can alter, not everybody, in some people it can alter their hormone balance and can affect your adrenal gland and it may have gone up because of that. Again, please check it up with your doctor. You may need some blood tests to confirm whether your hormone levels have been altered. My father has gone for a bypass a second time but he has no high blood pressure. But the doctor advised him to take medication for precaution. Okay. Now this does happen on and off. Someone who's gone for a bypass, we do not want any further blockages. Now, one of the reasons could be your father may have had what is called labile blood pressure. In other words, he has normal blood pressure, but when he talks or when he is discussing something seriously or doing some work, he may have, have, it, have his pressure rise suddenly. And then, of course, when the event is over, it comes back to normal. Now, in someone with a heart disease, we can't afford to have that. So that's why they give a small dose of a blood pressure medicine to keep the pressure even, so that under no circumstances can it rise up and cause further damage. Will hypertension be influenced by cold weather? I'm fine when I back, I'm back in Malaysia. Only uh, the, pre the pressure is only high when I'm in London. Now again, the, 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 the weather should not be a cause. I'm just wondering because it is a foreign country uh, and you may not have adjusted there, there's more stress or you're working there. Now, if you say, you are, if somebody says, I was on vacation, don't think vacation is without stress. During vacation, if you travel a lot, you're traveling in unknown places, you're sleeping in new areas almost every other day, you're eating food that you're not used to, that's all, there's a lot of stress. Mentally, you may be enjoying yourself, but your whole body is taking a lot of stress. So look into that part. Doctor said my mother is pre-hypertension. What is that? If you remember the slide where we showed uh, blood pressure, that is normal blood pressure, and I mentioned that if it is 140, just below 140, you are pre-hypertensive. And that, that's the reason uh, your doctor may have uh, classified this as pre-hypertensive. Now I'll just show that slide again here. 120, 80 is okay. If somebody is 130, 90 or 140, 80, now that is already pre-hypertension. And some doctors would like to bring that down. Remember there may be not much damage but the, at that level the heart is under strain. So if the person is already having uh, fatigue and the palpitation, it's good to go on a very mild antihypertensive medication to ease the heart's uh, stress. I am a hypertensive patient and I take body. Is burn, cleanse and rest helpful for my hypertension? Not really. Body is a product that is for managing excess body fat. Now, 
in body we also add Vima. So you get your vitamins, minerals and antioxidants. Okay? Now if your high blood pressure is due to excess body fat and lack of the minerals, taking body will help. So I will not say it doesn't help at all, but it depends on the reason for your increased blood pressure. Now next question, can Vima help color blindness? No. Color blindness uh, is completely a different reason and so uh, Vima will not help with that. I have knee problem. When I climb stairs, the knee gives a clicking sound. Can Vima help? I have taken Vima for three years. Now after three years, if your knees are still clicking, it hasn't really helped you. Now, when you have any knee problem, whether pain, clicking sensation, or pain when sitting down, pain when coming down the stairs, please check with the doctor. Knee is a joint area. The pain could be coming from the bone, the cartilage, the muscle, the ligament, or cartilage. And therefore, you have to localize, you have to find out what is the main cause. When I'm taking body rest, I feel itchiness for the whole body. Is that okay? Now, body products have herbal extracts. Body rest has herbal extracts to relax you so that you have a good night's sleep. Sleep is one of the uh, things that you need to reduce excess body fat and stress hormones. It is possible that some people may react to this herbal extract. So what you can do is take it with a lot of water and if you still have it then you may need to stop and then maybe start taking body at half the suggested dosage. Okay? If nothing happens then you continue at that strength. If you still have itchiness then you may have to give up on body rest. My two children have high blood pressure. Elder one is 10, the younger one is 9. Oh, if blood pressure at this early stage, I'm sure they're already under the care of a specialist. You didn't mention whether they have any kidney problem or whether they've located any other cause for the hypertension. That has to be dealt with for the hypertension to be controlled. While this is going on, the doctors will give high blood pressure to keep the pressure down so that their young circulatory systems do not get damaged. Please follow the doctor's instruction. Now, will Vima help? Vima will help as much as a good diet or maybe a little bit more. When you take Vima, you are quite sure the basic ingredients your body gets is 100% of your daily requirement. Plus, you will be eating a good diet, so you always have extra of all the basic ingredients that you need. Uh, it looks like that's the last question. We are now it's 8.52, there's about 5 minutes left. Is there anything else you would like to ask? I will just wait about 30 seconds and if not, I, I have a couple of things to say before I wrap up. By the way, do not forget that next week we have another uh, webinar, same time, same day, coronary artery disease. So we will be discussing the disease process and uh, we hope to show you some images to explain the heart problem better. Uh, heart problems are the number one killer in all countries. It's important that uh, we need to understand this. Okay, right. Fellow brand partners, it seems like tonight we are slightly early and we have uh, 
uh, listen to doctors with lots of tips and a lot of advice and we heard many many questions that coming in you know I do learn a lot tonight especially how to prevent you know so-called prehypertension and if we have our friends relatives you know family members that's already been diagnosed with hypertension well we have a lot of ways a lot of methods to actually help them to improve their health of course we all know that Vima helps a lot all right so uh, as what doctors have just mentioned okay just a reminder for everyone tonight in the room that we're going to have another webinar session on 21st of November is next Thursday 8 o'clock sharp and the titles we're going to cover is coronary artery disease It's mainly we're going to talk about heart disease or even heart problems right uh, I've seen doctor slides and he's done a very good preparations you know lots of uh, interesting heart images that uh, for him to explain better all right it look like uh, we do not have uh, any questions that coming in well, I think we'll wrap it up for tonight. Anything to, to mention or to advise, Doctor? Um, the questions today have been very comprehensive, actually. I didn't expect so many questions. And each one had uh, uh, something to contribute to everybody. Uh, yeah, that, that's it. Okay, right. Thank you so much uh, for doctors, you know, uh, all his professional knowledge and especially uh, on all the information. And thank you everyone in the room tonight. Until we meet next week, well, take care and of course consume Wima. All right. Thank you very much and good night. The, this company... We live in a dynamic city, and as our lives continue to get increasingly hectic, we sacrifice wholesome home-cooked meals for unhealthy alternatives, and never seem to find the time to exercise. As a result, 1 in 10 Singaporean adults are now obese. To really make a difference, we needed to go from telling people to be healthy, to enabling healthier lifestyles starting from the ground up. That's why the Health Promotion Board has developed a complete health ecosystem that makes healthy living easily accessible to each and every family in Singapore, be it in schools, at hawker centres, shopping malls, MRT stations, parks or community clubs. To inculcate the right eating habits from an early age, we've introduced Healthy Set Meals at school canteens. The Healthy Set Meal comes in the form of a box, uh, like a, you know, the bento, the Japanese bento style. So you have all the different compartments and you have fruits, you have vegetables, you have meat, you, know, you have rice and all that. Actually part of this program involves the nutritionist working very closely with the canteen vendors to calibrate the amount according to the daily diets uh, recommended for each uh, child. I think it is a good step forward to ensure that our kids consume balanced and healthy meals in school where they spend quite a bit of their time. I would like to encourage more schools, in fact all schools, to join in this program. Singaporeans can also look forward to healthier choices when eating out at our partnering food centres. The health of the constituency is always up over my mind. So we like to see how they can have wider choice, better choice, healthier choices and good tasting food as well. Saya cuba menggunakan whole grain noodles, bukan saja halal, tapi demi untuk kesihatan dan menarik perhatian pelanggan. We've also given Singaporeans' favourite pastime a healthy twist with more walks. Very refreshed after the walk. So uh, hopefully have more lah, this time walk, more walk. Community clubs also play a big part. Healthier cooking classes, exercise programs, training, and integrated screening programs will be made accessible to all Singaporeans. I'm very happy about this collaboration uh, with the HPB uh, to bring uh, health uh, services uh, in an even more convenient way to the community here in Nawampo. Uh. This integrated screening program is a one-stop solution for the elderly. It will cover things like the thoracic cancer, breast cancer, high blood pressure and others. Besides building a comprehensive infrastructure, 
Health Promotion Board also built the People Wear in the form of a Health Ambassador Program. The aim of the Health Ambassador Program is to empower the individuals so that they can help themselves, their families and the community. Healthier options are all around. It's time for us to get up and get moving. Okay, it's a healthy lifestyle and exercise is really important for us to prevent us from the sickness and breathless and also cannot get a heart attack <laughs> and also release from the stress, no pressure. <laughs> I'm very glad that the community has now come together to create an environment that is conducive to promotion of a healthy living. I think every effort towards creating this healthy living environment will go towards uh, encouraging uh, personal responsibility of each individual's health. I think if we can work together, we will be able to help Singaporeans lead a healthy life, a happy life and a long life. It's time for all of us to make the change. Let's get healthy together.